obviously want to sit and support teammates and therefore prepared to have their physio treatments courtside. So the men's singles, Victor Axelsson from Denmark against Dieter Dormka uh, from Germany. This will be the third meeting between these two men. The first two meetings have been won by the young Dane. And the young Dane only turned 21 last month from Odense, the main city on the island of Funen. And of course the birthplace of Hans Christian Andersen, the famous Danish author of fairy tales. So Axelsson won his world junior title in Guadalajara in 2010 and is currently enjoying his third week at his career high of number nine. But here is Dito Dorka, 28-year-old from Costa Night, as I say, in northern Kazakhstan. 60 on the world ranking at the moment. He has been as high as 38. And his win-loss record for last year, well, 11 tournaments, two finals. He won the White Knights, beating Thomas Raxel of France in the final. And then he reached the final of the Brazil International, where he lost out under the trial scoring system to Scott Evans of Ireland. So their confirmation, his career high of nine in the world, Victor Axelsson. And his win-loss record for last year, one title. The Swiss Grand Prix gold event beat another former world junior champion, Tian Hao Wei, in the final, coming from 18-20 down in the third game, saving those two match points before taking the title. So he was a bronze medalist at the European Championships last year in Kasan. And it, it was the European Championships four years ago. Well, almost uh, f four years ago when these two players first met each other. So, Atiem Arno of Estonia, our umpire for this. Carol Iaril of Ireland is our service judge. So Dieter Dormkat of Germany getting this men's singles underway. It's gone long. Now, as far as Victor Axelsson is concerned, he played in the very first of the group matches for Denmark against Poland. Uh, beat uh, Adrian Duko in two straight games, 21-13, 21-13, in just under 30 minutes of play. He hasn't been selected since. Janel Jorgensen played against the Netherlands in the last of the group matches and then in the quarter-final yesterday against Ireland. As far as Dieter Dormke is concerned, he's also just played one match. That was in the only group match in Group 3 when Germany lost to Scotland 3-2. And he lost that match to Kieran Merrilies. And there was only two teams in that group because, of course, Spain withdrew before the start of the competition. Very disappointing at that. Because, in fact, this European Mixed Team Championships had started last November. There was seven qualifying groups in seven different cities around Europe. And each of those qualifying groups had four nations competing, and it was the top of the, the group in each of those seven qualification areas that 
won the right to contest these finals, European Mixed Team Championship finals here in Leuven. It's gone wide. Now, Victor Axelson, former European junior champion, former world junior champion, and of course bronze medalist at last year's world championships in Copenhagen. His opponent, Dieter Dormke, has also come through the youth system here in Europe because Dieter Dormke was silver medalist at the 2005 European Junior Championships, lost out to Arajif Usif. of England. Mm, full pirouette there from uh, Victor Axelson. Going wide, good judgment. That's a good angle on the smash from Axelson. Rally and a bit of good fortune. Yeah, that smash from Dormka thundered off the top of the tape before going over. Oh, good defence. Yeah, it's clever. Using the body smash to great effect. Uh, Victor Axelson and it's so difficult for such a tall athlete as indeed Dieter Dormker is 
to get himself out of the way, give himself the freedom to play the defensive shot, and that is nigh on perfect placement, aimed towards the right hip of the German. And so Victor Axelsson with a five-point advantage here at the mid-game interval. <laughs> Towering over his coaches. Storm Cup coaches Chu Yun Wang. And long. That's a pity. I think Dormka so anxious to finish off the rally. Well, I was chatting to this young Dane a little earlier in the week, and he was telling me that uh, he's now back to full fitness. He's had one or two minor injury problems with a, a lower back injury. And he was saying he wanted to be awfully careful at such a young age, just literally turned 21 last month. Doesn't want that to get any worse and be an issue throughout his career. They're very wise taking the precaution of getting it absolutely right before returning to court. And with shots like that, it's clear to see why he has such potential. Look at this angle. That is just unbelievable. just outclassing his opponent at the moment. Ten point advantage. Oh, it's called just wide. A little scratch of the head from Axelson. Right, good to see that he's not wasting energy on arguing the case because there is no case to argue. Unless the umpire makes an instant overall. And judge's decision is final. We don't have an instant review system here.
Oh. Well, Dieter Dorka didn't agree with the call. Looks to the umpire. The umpire agrees with the line judge. Let's have another look at that. Ooh, it was mighty close, wasn't it? I have to say my initial reaction as, she, as he hit the shot was that the correct call had been made. Oh, called long. Oh. Yeah, so too is that. Mm, very, very good judgment. Well, after some wonderful rallies in the early exchanges, shorter rallies at the moment. Yeah. Maybe just losing the focus because he's so far in front, Victor Axelson. Perfect. Yeah. Found his range once more. And now seven game point opportunities for Denmark's uh, Victor Axelsson. for one moment that had gone over but it didn't Opening game, 21-15. Third game point opportunity is converted. Fourteen minutes for that opening game. And Victor Axelson, having had that ten-point advantage at one stage at 16-6, and looking very much in control. There is Coach Xu Yong Wang. A number of Chinese coaches based here in Europe, sharing the knowledge of the most successful nation in the sport of badminton. Now oh, that's young Fisher Nielsen, I think, under that big hat. Joachim Fisher Nielsen's young son. 
One game to the good Denmark in the men's singles. Second match of this second semi final tie. 21 15, the opening game in favour of Victor Axelson. Uh, I do feel it's important that this man, Dieter Dormka, gets a good start to the second game because if the young Dane gets an early lead, I think uh, Dormka will lose a little bit of spirit. He too, like his opponent, is coming back from injury. Well, it looks terribly spectacular, the full pirouette there, but I'm not sure it this world-class level that you really have time for that. Oh, that's unlucky. Shuttle deflected by hitting the top of the tape and bouncing wide of the sideline. Had it not caught the net cord, may have landed in. It's just wide. Now, that was better defence on the backhand side from Axelson. Instead of doing the full pirouette. Look at this. Yep, that's better. Then he's quicker. Back ready for the next one. Yeah, good play. Four straight points from the Dane. Oh, that's nicely done. Good precision on the cross court smash from Dormka. Thank you. Oh. 
Yeah, good return. Well, he can't believe the call. Victor Axelson. He was sure that had landed in. Well, the line judge calling it long. No question of that. That was wide. And this is exactly the sort of run of points that the German needed. Yeah, but he's very, very effective. Axelson with the body smash at his opponent. the German move from side to side making him twist and turn and that's clever tactical awareness from the Dane that's very fast to follow up having played the smash straight down the line knew that the reply had to be a straight block and he was storming forward Victor Axelson and exactly the same scoreline here at the mid-game interval of game number two as there was in game number one the five-point advantage looking a little subdued at the moment German fans German supporters decision from the German on that back line there costing him dear but I have to say that it was played with pace that flat push Oh. Well, it's just long, but I do like the racket action coming forward there from Axelson. Danes call it a windscreen wiper shot where they just wrap the racket head round. Look at this. Yeah. Across the path, the line of the shuttle. Frustration 
are beginning to get to the German. Oh yeah, that's nice. Well, lose confidence, the world of good. Oh, I wonder what on earth height that was that the shuttle was coming down from. One metre ninety-eight to start with, plus the arm outstretched above the head, plus the racket on top of that. Well, he's hanging in there, his dorm cut. pressure play and again there's that kill from the front of the court from Axelson where he brings the racket across the line of the shuttle keeping it straight that's very clever indeed technically good It's an eight-point advantage now. And this looking ominous for the defending champions, Germany. Oh, that's good work from the Dane. Good movements, commanding the rally from the very first hit of the shuttle. Keeping the discipline, get behind the shuttle, move the feet. Oh, that's a good push too. Yeah, well, with the opening game, there was a 10-point advantage at 16-6. There's a 10-point advantage here in the second at 19-9. Only had 29 minutes of play. Axelson winning the only previous match he's played in exactly 29 minutes. Yeah. I've got my eye on the clock. Will he finish this off in under 30 minutes once more? Match points are plenty. Yeah, good defence. Just long. Well, it was a run of six straight points. But the German extending this men's singles a little longer. Twenty-one, fifteen, twenty-one, twelve. The margin of the victory for Victor Axelson. 
And of course that means uh, that Denmark take a two love lead in the semi-final tie. 31 minutes needed for Victor Axelsson's uh, victory in two straight games. Team stand up for the usual Danish celebration. And they'll wait for Victor Axelsson to come nearer this end of the court. There's the typical Danish.